Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd Continuing on in our discussion of Tawakal Allah by Shaykh Islam ibn, uh, ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned the fifth level of Tawakal or the fifth component of Tawakal and he said to have good opinion with regards to Allah the Almighty and Majestic Husnul Dhan Billah Azza wa Jal so in accordance with your good opinion with regard to your Lord and the hope you have in Him will be the level of your reliance upon Him. So this is very important to have husn al-dhan billah and be sincere. And may Allah grant us this and grant us the strength in our iman, I mean, to really rely upon Him. If we truly believe in our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala because we've never seen Him, we've only heard of Him, we only read His his his, his, his speech in the, in the, in the Qur'an, and the authentic sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa is because we believe in the ghayb. We believe in the ilm of ghayb. And this is the sifat of the mu'min. So if we truly have husn al in what we believe in, and, 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 and that we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He truly exists, and He truly can help us with all, everything we're trying to achieve and attain, then this only benefits us. And this is what strengthens a person's uh, tawakal. Then the reality is that a good opinion with regards to Allah urges a person to place reliance in Him. Since it cannot be imagined that you would place your trust uh, upon one whom you think evil of, nor would you place trust upon one whom you do not hope for good from, and Allah knows best. The sixth uh, level, and I think that's self-explanatory, the sixth level, surrender of the heart to Him. Istislam al-qalb lahu. Surrendering your heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that all its inclinations are directed to Him. And all other tendencies are cut off. So this is how it was explained by those who said that the servant before Allah should be like the deceased person in front of the one washing the body. Who moves around just as he pleases whilst he is unable himself to move or do anything. So this is the meaning of the saying of some of them, meaning some of the Salaf or some of the ulama. Tawakkul is to drop all control over affairs, meaning to submit to the Lord's control of you. So this is with regard to other than things which have been commanded or forbidden, being with regard to whatever He does to you, not with regard to whatever He orders and forbids you. So the submission is to be like that of a compliant servant who submits himself to his master and obeys him and who leaves his personal inclinations and desires for his master, and Allah, the one free of all imperfections, and the Most High, knows best. Then the Shaykh mentioned the seventh level, to entrust one's affairs to Allah. This is a spirit, and this is what we said in the beginning, that tawakkul on Allah is putting all your trust, all of your affairs, leaving them to Allah, and make an effort to attain uh, to attain that which you're trying to attain. He said, this is the spirit and the core and the reality of Tawakal. And it means to resign and entrust all of one's affairs to Allah and to leave them for settlement with Him, desiring and seeking that, not due to compulsion and being constrained to do so. Rather, it is to be like the incapable and weak son who has no control over his affairs, who entrusts all of his affairs to his father. He who will know best about being concerned for him, merciful towards him, seeing to all of his needs, guarding him in the best way, and taking care of his affairs. So he sees that his father's taking care of him is better for him than his looking after himself. He sees that his father's understanding whatever is beneficial for him, and his being responsible for that is better than his doing it for himself. So he does not find anything more beneficial and pleasant for himself than entrusting all of his affairs to his father. This relieves him of the burden of carrying the responsibility and the burden along with his own inability and his awareness of the complete knowledge of the one he trusts his affairs to and his ability and his great concern. So when he attains this level, then he will proceed to the next level. So the seventh level is to entrust your affairs truly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he mentioned the eighth level being pleased and content uh, with, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the tawakal, with this putting trust. He said, this is the fruit of tawakal. And those who explain a tawakal with it and are explaining it in light of the greatest of its fruits and the greatest of its benefits. So if he truly has tawakal, then he will be pleased with whatever the one 
he is placed in charge of his affair does. His affairs does. Our Sheikh, meaning Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, used to say, what has been decreed should be met with two matters. A tawakkul before it and being pleased after it. So whoever places reliance in a law before the action and is pleased with whatever is decreed after the action, then he has attained servitude, al-ubudiyah, or its meaning. I say, and this is the meaning of the saying of the Prophet in the supplication of istikhara, O oh Allah, I seek your guidance to what is good through your knowledge, and I ask for your assistance due to your power, and I ask you to grant me from your great bounty. So this is a reliance and entrusting one's affair. So when we say the istikhara, the dua for istikhara, the supplication, that this is, a, we're leaving our affairs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's a part of tawakkul because then you're, you're making counsel after that. So you're relying, you're, you're supplicating to Allah, asking Him for guidance to help you in your decision. Then you are uh, putting your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are then making effort to attain whatever you're trying to attain or whatever decision you're going to make and seeking counsel from your brothers and sisters. So this is a part of tawakkul as well. Then he said, meaning the, the Prophet Sallallahu since you know and I do not know and you have the ability and power and I do not have the ability and you are the knower of all affairs of the hidden and the unseen. This is what the Prophet Sallallahu supplicated with to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala showing us the Prophet Sallallahu did not know knowledge of the unseen except what Allah gave him knowledge of. Meaning he did not know all of the affairs. So this is a refutation of those people who are extreme and who worship the Prophet Sallallahu or claim that he knew knowledge of the uh, of the unseen other than what was prophesied to him from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the, uh, declaring one's being devoid of the knowledge, power and ability and seeking nearness to him by means of his attributes, meaning the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is what is most loved to him from the things that people seek nearness with. Then he asked his Lord to ordain that affair for him if it is to his benefit in the short term and the long term and that he should keep it away from him if it is harmful for him in the short term or the long term. So this is his need that he asked for. So nothing remains for him then except to be pleased with whatever is decreed for him. So he said, and decree whatever is good for me, wherever it is, then cause me to be pleased with it. So this is your supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this supplication comprises great knowledge granted by Allah through revelation and realities of Iman, from which is tawakkul and entrusting one of one's affairs to him before what is decreed comes about, and being pleased and contented after it comes about. And this is the fruit of a tawakkul, and entrusting one's affairs to him is a sign of its correctness. So if he is not pleased and content with what is decreed for him, then his entrusting of his affairs was defective and futile. So by completing these eight levels, a servant will have completed a tawakkul and will be firmly upon it. So this is, was the statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyim with regards to tawakkul and relying and being dependent upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he mentioned some very beneficial uh, steps and stages. And I advise those who are interested in this topic to go and download uh, from the internet the translation uh, of what I just read by uh, the brother uh, da Dawood uh, Burbank, uh, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, may Allah bless him and, and forgive and, and, and bless him with Jannah Tafardos and reward him for his very beneficial translations in translating books from Ahlul Sunnah and teaching. And so my advice is to search on the internet and search more about this topic of tawakkul from Ahlus Sunnah, from the uh, Imam to Ahlus Sunnah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.